If you ever felt confused by or even stumbled over expressions like free climbing, aid climbing, free solo, tread climbing, alpine climbing, then this video is for you. Hey guys, welcome to the high ground. My name is Fabio and today we're talking about different climbing styles. The backstory of this video is that I was out with our, well, environmental protection club and we were fighting invasive species. And in Switzerland, people are pretty much into mountain sports. So when they hear that you climb or that you're currently working uh, on your mountain guide exam, then they get pretty interested and start asking questions. So did an older gentleman and he asked me, hey, are you also doing this free climbing? And I understood what he meant, but I think he doesn't know what he actually asked. And so I thought it might be a good opportunity to clear the air and just settle for anybody who is interested in it, what the actual climbing styles, what those names, free climbing, free solo, tread, etc., what they actually mean. Let's start with the two main groups with aid climbing and free climbing. We're putting aid climbing to the side for later and concentrate on free climbing. Free climbing means that you are moving over the wall just by using your hand and feet. It doesn't say about anything about the protection you're using, but you're only allowed to pull on natural features the rock, maybe the occasional tree, with your hand and your feet. You are not using any tool to propel you up the mountain, at least not by holding onto it or pulling on it. If we really look at free climbing, the origins of free climbing came from the Alps and one of the pioneers was Paul Preuss. He lived from 1886 to 1913, so he didn't get old. <laughs> He established that people should climb freely only by using their hand and feet to hold onto the rock and to move over the rock. In terms of protection, there was not a lot of technology there. He was very much a purist and he even said that rappelling down a climb is not acceptable. He was really yeah, more or less hardcore, just hand, feet. And if you then imagine the heavy mountain boots uh, at the beginning of the 20th century, um, yeah, he was pretty, pretty much a wild guy. And with him, the whole epoch of free climbing in the 20th, 20th century began. Now, when it comes to free climbing, free climbing has different SAP categories. We're talking about free solo, we're talking about sport climbing, and we're talking about tread, or in European they also say alpine climbing. Let's start with sport climbing. Again, you're only using your hand and feet to pull on natural features. If you're sport climbing, you generally have bolts fixed to the rock on your route. And you just take a quick draw, clip into the bolt, put your rope through the other end of the quick draw, and that's your protection. That's a very easy type of protection, so you don't have to worry about the placement because the bolt is already there. Of course, you have to make sure that the bolt is still fine, but generally they should be. And that's the, that's the gist of sport climbing. Now there is a little bit of discussion because we have single pitch sport climbing that basically goes up to the first belay and then back down and you have multi pitch sport climbing where you move from belay to belay. But still as long as there are bolts on the route, regardless if you're going one pitch or several pitches, you can still say it's sport climbing and then everybody should still understand what you mean. The next thing that gets often mixed up with free climbing 
is actually free solo climbing. Free solo climbing is what we saw Alex Honnold doing on El Capitan in Yosemite in the, yeah, I think it was a blockbuster movie, right? So you're climbing again only by using your hand and feet, but you don't have any protection beyond that. That means a fall is not held by a rope, but you're just falling until you hit the next thing that is in your way. That might be a ledge two, ma two meters down, but that might be also the actual ground 200 meters down. If we are very precise, then we're doing a lot of free soloing uh, when we're doing alpinism, because the lower grade terrain Maybe, I mean, depending on the individual skill, but there is a lot of free soloing involved in alpinism, especially on ridges and stuff. So it's not always Alex Honnold climbing the face of El Capitan, but it's really something that is not that crazy. Because, for example, in alpine, uh, in alpine environments on a ridge, you might have the, as I mentioned, ledge two meters below you. So the consequences are not that high and the additional speed of not belaying is sometimes worth the risk of yeah, not being tied into a rope. But that's of course a different discussion, but uh, that should give you a good idea what free solo is. In the third subsection of free climbing, you're actually using this stuff to protect yourself. So these are friends or camelots. Camelots is the name that I think Black Diamond specifically gave them. Um, overall, they are cams, camming devices, or so-called nuts. Um, what they do is, for the cams, you pull on this lever, they close, you can wedge them into something, and then they open. You can then clip your rope directly to them or you also put a quick draw to them and clip the rope to the quick draw. On tread routes, generally this is your protection. You of course also bring slings to sling around trees or rock features. There are a lot of possibilities, but the main point is that you are taking care of the actual placement of your protection yourself. You don't have pre-placed bolts. There is a whole discussion on the belays. If you're a purist, then you would generally say, yeah, even on a belay, you're not allowed to have bolts. Um, if you're maybe a little bit more modern, a little bit more lenient, then you'd say, yeah, we, allowed bo we allow bolts on tread climbs, um, at least at the belays, because a belay has to be in a specific spot to be uh, secure from rockfall, etc. And you just don't want everybody to hammer in his nuts or his cams um, because there might be a little bit of abrasion on the rock, depending on the rock types. Of course, in sandstone more than in granite. But um, yeah, those are just the general recommend or the general considerations. An additional part of tread climbing can be these guys here, together with a hammer. Those are so-called pitons. They are different size and shapes for different rock types. And you generally hammer them into splits or crevices in the rock. Sometimes it's a little bit, um, well, it's not well regarded to do that because that actually puts a lot of strain on the rock. So just check out the well, the customs in the area you are going to tread climb in before you head out with, the, uh, with these guys, because um, yeah, it might get you a little bit in trouble with other people there. Or even with the environmental, environmental protection agencies of that place, right? Regardless what you do in terms of protection, if you just clip a quick draw to a bolt, or if you put a cam or even a piton in the rock yourself, you only use that for protection. You're not pulling on them, you're not using them to propel you upwards on the rock. If you would start to use tools 
to actually ascend. So you would put in a cam and pull on it. That would lead us to the distinction we made early in the beginning between free climbing and aid climbing. In aid climbing, almost all bets are off. Aid climbing is climbing with the usage of technical means to actually ascend the wall. Ascending the wall in aid climbing typically includes all this stuff in various combinations. But there are also tools that are very specific to aid climbing. And this is something like these ladders here that are actually made to clip into something and then step onto the ladders. Lastly, it is even possible to hand drill or even machine drill a hole and put a bolt in there and tie or clip a ladder into this, clip your rope into this for aid climbing. There is a lot of controversy at the fringes of all those definitions I just gave you, right? Um, as usually where are people, they have the, well, they, the urge to separate or to distinguish between each other. Um, that might be natural. I don't want to go really deep into that because I find it a little bit childish. Um, one thing we can say though, if we start bolting ourselves up a wall, it of course can still be a matter of endurance, a matter of organization, right? If you have to haul stuff up a big wall uh, while you're hand bolting your way up there, I mean, that's still a physical feat, right? But in the end, um, I think Reinhold Messner called it the death of the impossible if we actually start to bolt up our way any wall that, that we like to. So, and yeah, that's a slight, critique maybe towards aid climbing. Um, there are a lot of very hard aid routes and it requires a lot of skill to properly aid climb. So it's not easier than actual free climbing. It's just something different. And if you're out there in the mountain sports community, you might benefit of knowing the difference. Okay, this was just a brief summary on this topic. I hope it gave you a somewhat viable overview. There are of course a lot of nuances to any topic. And yeah, if you like that video, please give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel. That is very motivating. It also helps a lot. And yeah, thank you very much for your time watching this video and I'll see you next time.